Well, I'm State Representative Deborah Hellstrom, and I am a University of Minnesota grad. I studied right here in this very building for many, many years. Um, there used to be a time when the University of Minnesota um, really was very good to their workers, and they had a mission of lifelong learning. Um, and there was a time when you had a general college where students who needed a little extra assistance, um, residents that I represent, um, had an opportunity to come to the school, even if they were kind of on the cusp or maybe um, having a little challenge, a uh, bit of challenges with their academics, they were still able to come here um, and get a great education. My sister was actually one of them um, who started in the general college. Um, that has been eliminated as well. We need to make sure that the University of Minnesota, when we fund them, has the ability to make it accessible for education for folks who need it, who have been left behind previously, as well as for staff. If we need to have a culture for lifelong learning if we want to have a world-class economy in the future. So I thank the staff for what you've done. The legislature has let you down in the last number of years. You know, when Governor Tim Pawlenty went to college, um, the state paid two-thirds of his education he paid one third. Mm -hmm. That's the way tuition was based. Now that has been flipped. So since the time he was in office till till now, that has been flipped, and now students um, pay two thirds of their education, and the state pays one third. Um, we, that is not a sustainable model. I believe that's one of the reasons why Bernie Sanders was very, very popular mm -hmm. um, during the election time, especially among students. Right? He was talking about how you can get ahead. When you have student loan debt, you can't buy a house. You can't um, you know, move on with your life. I have two students um, who graduated from college. My daughter graduated here from the University of Minnesota, and then she went on uh, to become a lawyer. She still is paying undergraduate loans. My son graduated last year from Iowa State. He still is paying student loans, and he's living at home because he's still unemployed. So we need to have a system that one, uh, makes it affordable, and two, makes it so you're employable, and three, allows you to be a lifelong learner. So thank you for the organizing that you're doing. We need you, we need your voices. Um, because legislators, if we don't hear from you, um, they aren't telling us they are, right? The testimony is not coming in is anything like what you're saying here, right? Not from the university. So we need your voices to be heard. So thanks so much for looking for today. Can I just say what she said? <laughs> Thank you again. I'm uh, uh, State Senator Scott Dibble, and I'm uh, extremely pleased to be here. It's great to see SEIU and ask me the Teamsters, any other labor unions represented uh, here, are organizing this conversation and this uh, organizing drive. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, emphasize a couple of points that uh, Deborah made. Um, one is, and we had this discussion back in the corner, we had a little small group. I'm going to have this conversation with uh, a couple of university students today for University Day at the Capitol. And I also tell the president this, and these regents, and alumni in my, in my district, and anyone who will listen to me. Um, and that is that uh, the university, um, for whatever reason, just doesn't have a lot of political juice uh, at, the, at the legislature. And so uh, anything we can all do together to make it politically matter, particularly to our good friends on the other side of the aisle, um, uh, to do all of the things that uh, Deborah so eloquently described, um, you know, making sure that we're delivering an accessible, affordable hire, and we're not putting students into lifelong student debt. I have a couple stories to tell about that. Um, you know, that we're supporting, that we're returning to the land grant mission of this institution. Um, here, here. Last biennium, the, the Republicans in the House thought it was perfectly acceptable to turn in a zero budget uh, for the University of Minnesota. Now, what universe is that acceptable? But they got away with it politically. So that tells us that we've got a lot of work politically um, to do. Um, I just think about how other countries treat students, those who are seeking higher education, training, skills, whatever, to move into the workforce. They do not treat students the way we treat them in the country. Our bigger mission, of course, is to develop a social contract that helps us understand that this is absolutely the kind of investment we make as a country in ourselves, in our future, in our students. Um, you know, we don't look at this as a basic human and civil right and a public good, um, similar to healthcare. We just don't look at that as a basic civil in the right. We have so much to do to really talk about what it means to invest in each other and how we all benefit. I live this reality. I had a hell of a time getting through college myself. Um, my niece, who's uh, uh, the daughter of my sister, um, my sister was a single mom, so I played uh, a major role as her kind of major paternal influence in her life. So I'm very, very close 
to her and to them. I um, decided to, she graduated from the University of Minnesota, embarked on a brilliant career. It wasn't for her, she wanted to go into public service, decided to go back and get a graduate degree and become a teacher in Minneapolis Public Schools. She did that. She's a phenomenal kindergarten teacher. Phenomenal. But I'm not just saying that because she's my <laughs> objective <laughs> evidence. Um, and uh, she herself has a, an amazing 14 year old daughter. She's also a single mom. And she's forced to live with my sister, the three of them, living in a small house in South Minneapolis because she can't. She's still paying off her student loans and can't buy a house and can't get you know, the basic buildings that her life started. So um, the Regents, uh, the Regents uh, scholarship to invest in the employees and the families of, of this institution are extremely important. And I support that very, very strongly too. So um, whatever I can do to lend my voice and my leadership, uh, both on, on what we're trying to do in terms of organizing here at the campus and the profile of the university, but also in this larger task that we have as a country to make sure that we're investing in, in ourselves and in our future. So thank you very much.